I'm at a gypsy. To go then to the Stark, so I guess just talk about the experience of like seeing it for the first time, riding it for the first time, like what are they like as a company? Um, you know, because there, there's, it's, dude, it's probably the, that was probably like one of the most significant announcements in the history of motorcycling. I think it's like it, it got a lot of attention, but I don't think, I don't think it's until these things start coming out that people are going to realize how big that announcement was. And, and I was automatically in on it because the first thing you said to me when you called me was, yeah, we're not going to need gas for that much longer. And I was like, fuck, if Josh Hill is set, like, I know, like, that was a private conversation too, you know, that wasn't like, there's no incentive for you to to tell me that or there's no, you know, there's no cameras on. Like, that was just you as a homie being like, bro, I'm telling you, we will not need gas for too much longer. Yeah, I mean, that company... It, it, that was a pretty professional launch. They did it right. Like they hid this. They hid this bike. I don't know how they hid it so well. Me I, mean, they, either, I guess dude. they just had the right people around them. Like they just had the right people around them. You know, they had professionals. You know, they had Eric Pernard helping them, and um, you know, they had Sebastian Tortelli. You know, they they, they kept it tight knit, and they did it right. And the bike looks beautiful. Like, and they had the thing together, and they just they did a good job with it and the company itself it, it just seems futuristic a little bit like the way that they built this bike they took every chassis from every company out there and stress test every spot on it and did all this you know 3d molding and you know they they really did their homework before they built this bike it wasn't like oh, we have this battery. We can build this around this frame. You know, we, mm. we can build a frame around this battery and this motor. And like, they tried to build that thing from the ground up, like as a whole. I mean, the, the, the battery casing is integrated into the frame so that you can do a quick, easy swap, but you don't have... So if does that, like the casing is like the strong composite that's actually part of the frame. I think it's mm. composite. I mean, it's just every little thing about it. Like they, they develop their own battery. Like they, it's just, it's remarkable. It's, you can tell that some money and some thought went into this bike. It wasn't, this didn't happen by accident. You don't ride something and it be that plush and that good. And just the ergonomics on it be just so good from the ground level. I mean, I, when I was going there, I'm thinking, okay, this is cool. I hope these chains don't just fly off on the jump face on me or something, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. cause we, nobody had really even ridden this bike much. You know, Sebastian Tortelli had probably, you know, he'd spent a, maybe a couple of days on it before I got on it. So pretty incredible what they're able to do. And like I said, I think it's just, it's just scratching the surface. It really is just scratching the surface on what these bikes are going to be capable of imagine once there's an actual c competition in that realm mm. you know they're basically just picking up where alta left off you know and and they've made it way better uh, the alta was pretty re remarkable and then this is going to be you know it's i think it's going to easily blow it out of the water and you know i haven't done all the endurance testing on it like when we were doing it like we did testing and then we were doing video and to be honest, like we weren't really riding the bike at its full capacity either. And it was really? that good. So, cause it was so new, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty wild. Uh, I, I just can't wait till I have my own and I can go do all the things that, cause I still drive around and all I do is have ideas. Like luckily for me, I got sponsors that like what I do and support me and support my vision of what I think is cool on motorcycles. So and, and these electric bikes and, and being silent and, and you know I, I have all kinds of ideas of things I want to do that hopefully don't you know that, that kind of just blur the lines of of you know this is okay or not yeah <laughs> that makes sense so uh in terms of the like the bike itself um is it kind of like you get on and it, you can compare it to like a modern 450 in terms of like the way that it turns the way that um like the power is because i mean their whole model was like they weren't just trying to build a an 
electric bike that was like a good electric bike. They were trying to build a bike that was better than the best current bike. So if you like play it off against like the best current bike, like how does it stack up in terms of, you know, just like all the general boxes that you use to compare bikes against each other? So this is, that's a good question. And I think that, you know how like when the two stroke, the, we had the two stroke only and then the four stroke came out and the four mm. stroke, everybody's like, oh, that, you know, the four stroke's really good in the hard pack or it's really good in the mud or it's, you know, this or that. You kind of have those same things with the electric bike. It's its own, it's its own power chain. It has its own complete, totally different feel than anything else, but it's so responsive it's so easy to ride. And if you're like, if you were on, you know, perfect traction and real hard, like, you know, I guess maybe not perfect traction, real hard ground, that doesn't usually happen. But if you were on, you know, a, a ground that didn't have much drag to it, I assume that you'd hold a shot of 450 pretty much every time because you don't have to grab gears. It yeah, just hooks yeah, up. Yeah. You know, like, you don't realize how much downtime you have when you're like having to clutch and hit a gear. Like, that yeah. totally disrupts your, you know, your, your forward momentum. And the way this thing just hooks up and pulls and just continues to pull, like I would assume on a on a real hard pack start, you'd probably whole shot a 450 on it. Now, when you take it to you know sand and, and deeper deeper stuff, it's just it's gonna eat a little bit of that power up because it doesn't have all that rotating inertia. It doesn't have this big flywheel, big clutch. Doesn't have all this stuff, you know, big piston crank, like all this stuff that's pushing the engine to continue going, even if it's under a load and under a bog, like, you know, mm. the, that everything in that engine still spinning. There's so much inertia and metal, go you know what I mean? Yeah. Where it's just yeah. a small engine that is all reliant off a of battery. So, you know, it does have like instant killer torque and the bike's super fast. But say if you mess up a rhythm section, and you know, overshoot a double and you try to slam a triple, it's all going off that battery. So mm -hmm. yeah, that battery and that smaller engine. So I haven't really got a chance to test it back to back. Like I bet you, okay, I, I did test at one track. We had a Honda 450, just a stock Honda 450 and the Stark. And I would have to say my lap times are probably really close. Yeah really close and we weren't riding the bike at the full potential of the bike's capabilities at that time because they were still wanting us to milk up to the levels if that yeah, makes yeah, sense because yeah. they knew what the bike was capable of they knew these top numbers but they wanted to take baby steps before we you know went to that extreme uh just to make sure there was no no issues but the cool thing was we had no significant issues like while we were there. I mean, it was, uh, it was pretty smooth sailing. So maybe they've uncovered, you know, I'm sure they've uncovered some things along the way since I've been there that needed fixed. And I know Sebastian Tortelli has got to be out there just, you know, grinding away at making that thing awesome. Uh, and I can't wait to when I, I hopefully I get to go out there soon and go give it another shot and see what, see what they've improved on since. Are you going to go in Feb? When is that one? And I can't remember the date. February. Um, it was like at the end of Feb, I'm pretty sure, like the 20th or t somewhere around there. I'm pretty sure. Um, Hopefully. Yeah, because I think I'm going to try and go out there for that one as well. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to. I, any chance I get to go out there, I'd like to do it. It's, it's pretty cool. And like even just the company, like the... Ben and Anton, like those guys, yeah. you know, you can tell they've got big aspirations for what's going on. And yeah. they seem to have the business side of things kind of wired too. So yeah. I definitely want to stay close to those guys. I don't, I don't want them to forget about me. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I think once everybody hat, once everybody sees what they're truly capable of, everybody's going to want a piece of that piece of yeah. the deal. Yeah. That was one thing I was definitely impressed with, um, is the, like, once you put me in touch with those guys was just like the professionalism, the professionalism. Like when I spoke to Anton, like we had a video call, he's in a fucking suit. Like I've never seen that, uh, <laughs> you know? So it's like that, that it's not just like, I guess the product itself that they're working on that's out of the box. Like it seems like there's just an ethos, uh, as a company, on the whole that is different that they're trying to bring and i i just you'll never see me saying 
that like we shouldn't change like i'm all for people changing all the time like let's get as many different influences because it's like in my head that's what makes culture like the culture of our sport uh comes from like all the different influences and i think you know like our country i mean the u.s is the same it's like the reason why they're so fucking rad is that we've just got all of these different influences that get mixed in over time um and i think that the the stock as a as a company it's like there's a cultural element to it as well and i think that they're gonna like add to our overall picture of like what we've got going on and i think that that's gonna force it's just gonna force other people to think differently uh and i think it's gonna force some like different reactions out of the those other bigger manufacturers as well it's i think it's just gonna turn the turn the screws on them to to make something new and exciting like that especially once you know eventually these bikes electric bikes are gonna outperform what we're currently at with four strokes it's just yeah. the the talk the, the the clock's ticking on it it's it's gonna happen i mean we're just the battery technology there's such a demand for it that you know they're gonna develop a battery for something that is totally not intended to be a dirt bike battery but somehow we're gonna end up using that cell mm. in a dirt bike you know yeah. like th- that's that's the thing and you know, maybe one day we'll have a, a universal, there'll be universal battery packs that, you know, you could, you'll be running, this dude's running Duracell, this guy's on Panasonic, you know, <laughs> maybe yeah, that's yeah, going to be, yeah, right. yeah, this guy's yeah. Ryobi or DeWalt, you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Maybe that's, that's where, where it comes in. And then, you're, you know, we have these chassis manufacturers, you know, that could be, who knows the, the direction it's going to go. But yeah, I, again, and I don't want to be that guy. I hope I don't go down as, I hope I just get looked at as like, you know, like the Lance Smale or like Doug Henry of electric bikes. You know, like those guys are like the four stroke pioneers. Like I want, I mean, I'm not trying to kill gas bikes by any stretch. I, you know, I, I never want to see gas bikes go away, but I think there's a time and a place for all these things. And they're just, I, I can't even really control my, like, you know, my smile and my emotion thinking about all the fun that I've had on electric bikes. Mm. and people will figure it out all the flack that i've taken over the last six years seven years you know i mean i've had a lot of gay comments dude a lot of gay comments (laughs) if you enjoyed this content please like and subscribe and to listen to the full three-hour podcast search gypsy tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below gypsy gang